Hey guys, today we are continuing the GraphQL journey. This time I will explain basic concepts of GraphQL errors and error handling to you. The errors in GraphQL are handled differently in comparison to the REST APIs. GraphQL does not rely on HTTP statuses for informing about errors. If one error or more has occurred, they will be present inside the errors array. So from a client perspective to verify if something bad happened, you have to check if the errors array is not empty. Suppose there is an error in the query. For example, I have mistyped the name type name. What will be returned from the API then? In this scenario, the Apollo server will return an error deriving from Apollo error class and having code equal to a GraphQL validation failed. It is one of the predefined Apollo server's errors. You can check all possible error codes here in the Apollo documentation. Beside the error code, the error object contains an error message and stack trace. The stack trace is useful for debugging, but it shouldn't be included in a production environment. To disable stack trace in error messages, you have to set the node end variable to production or test. Apollo server throws errors of most built-in types automatically when applicable. For example, it throws a validation error whenever an incoming operation isn't valid against this server's schema. There are some cases when you don't want to expose actual error to the client. For example, maybe the error message contains confidential information or it's just meaningless to the client. In such cases, it is good to override the final error message. For that, there is a handy method you can use. The Apollo server constructor may take the format error callback as an input parameter. Um, the callback function takes only one parameter, which is the error. You can do with it whatever you want until the callback returns some error. For example, let's imagine that a database error has occurred. First, you have to catch the error because it contains some schema-specific details and it may be dangerous to expose such information. Then you'd like to return the generic internal server error. For that, let's create a callback function taking the error as an input. First, check if the type of error is database error in the callback. Mm, if so, return a new error containing a generic message. Otherwise, return the error without change. Now pass the callback to the Apollo constructor. It has to be added under the key format error. And that's it. Now we can test it out. So far so good. But are there any best practices on how to handle errors with a GraphQL? Of course they are. But to do it properly, we have to start from the beginning. The GraphQL schema has to be designed to support good error handling. It will be based on the interfaces and the union types. In my previous tutorial, I created a few queries and mutations for managing Movies API. Let's extend that example to one more query. The query may return a movie or two kinds of errors. Movie not found error or invalid movie ID error. I will create the interface called base error and set the message to be required. Next, I add two implementation of the interface, movie not found error and invalid error. Next, I will create the union type containing all of the above types. The last thing to do is create the query itself. Here you can see the final query definition. Let's see how the usage of union will affect the resolver. The getMovieById resolver function checks if the ID is type of number. If no, there is a validation error. I know that's a silly case, but I'd like to show you how to work with errors. The important thing here is 
that you have to use type name variable and specify the return type. Apollo server must know which type was returned by the resolver. Next, it checks if there is a movie with specific ID. If no, there is a movie not found error. Lastly, if there is a movie, the function returns the movie. With the resolver function ready, you can test it out in the Apollo Studio. The getMovieByID query also has to distinguish between return types. Again, let's use the type name variable to achieve that. So that's it for today. You have learned the basics of GraphQL error handling. Thank you and see you next time.